to Richmond. Um, today we're at the Richmond Museum. Let me tell you something about Richmond first. Do you know that um, Richmond is the high, has the highest percentage of immigrants in the entire country of Canada? And as well, this, it is also the city in North America with the largest population of the Asian. Uh, with a population of about 210,000 people, uh, more than half of this population is of Asian descent. And as of 2011, there is 54.67% Chinese, 6.1% Filipino, 4.4% South Asian, 1.7% Japanese, and 1.1% Southeast Asian in living in Richmond. And, and how does it affect having a museum in the city? How does it affect people's perception of going to exhibitions? And how, what do people think about their local identity and how do they think about the local history of Richmond. So today we're going to go into the Richmond Museum and talk to the curator of exhibition, Sheila Hill, and find out more. Today we have uh, Sheila Hill, the curator of exhibition at Richmond Museum with us, and I'm going to interview her on um, be how being in a museum in um, an immigrant-rich society differ from other museums. Um, so, um, can you tell us about uh, how the population makeup of Richmond alters your design approach or content in the exhibitions you have prepared here? Um, Richmond, as you know, is a majority minority community and has been for more than 100 years. So this is not new to Richmond. What has happened is we have a lot more non-English speaking um, immigrants and, and locals than we did. So we have to design our exhibits so they're accessible and very ESL friendly. And as a community museum, we always want to reflect our community in Richmond. That's a very rich experience from the Japanese Canadians arrival in 1888 through different waves of immigration right through to the Chinese arrivals today. And more recently, Syrian refugees. How about the themes of the exhibit? Would, would it cater to their interests more or still more rooted uh, in the history of Richmond because there's newer immigrants who are not familiar with the Japanese history mm -hmm. in Richmond. They, people would think that Richmond is like Chinese dominated because mm -hmm. they're more than 50 percent Chinese in the population yes. here. And that's our job is to share that with them and, and um, show them that Richmond has had all these, as I said, waves of immigrations with Japanese arriving earlier and then other groups arriving and, and different waves of Jap Chinese immigration as well. So that's our job is to tell that story and make it accessible and, as you say, engaging for them. And often that's showing, not telling. It might be the use of some Chinese words. But most people are curious about who came before them and why, and as always, you want to create kind of um, links to your audience. So certainly having that gives you certain design parameters that you then engage with. And a lot of that for us is around engagement, but we also think about what might, what might attract or also make a, a visitor uncomfortable. And Canada is a very multicultural place from coast to coast to coast. So we have to think about that for all of our exhibits. Mm. Okay. And um, there, have you encountered any cases where you have to make sacrifices to cater to a special community as opposed to the one that, let's say, in Vancouver or other cities that you've worked in? Not really. I mean, every city that I've worked in, and I've worked around the globe, as you know, I worked, did a lot of international work, and every place has its own constraints. And some places, um, they have different connections with different colors or different symbols, and you do your research and you respect that, because you don't want to mislead someone by including something which means something to you in your culture, but might mean something completely different to them. So there's always that. But I find most people here are eager to learn. They're curious, they want to know more, and they're fully willing and, and wanting to engage. A lot of our visitors, because we are a community museum and we're in the Richmond Cultural Center, so we don't get, we get a lot of visitors who aren't traditional museum visitors. And so for those groups, we have to gently let them know what kind of behavior is expected in the museum and what's appropriate and what they can engage in. But mostly we find that there really aren't issues. And if any, what we have done, though, 
to engage new arrivals is work with other community groups to provide tours that are translated and we're now working on a one-page introduction to the gallery which is being translated into Chinese so that they you know they will have an idea of what the, the interpretation is all about. Yeah I this the last exhibit there's one part that's very memorable to me in this aspect so where different colors have different symbolism mm -hmm. and different culture so while you see your own culture exhibit in mm -hmm. the exhibition, you can also learn about other people. Yeah, and that was a really good example because what we did was we tried to choose different areas which reflected the composition of our community because it was about textiles and fashion and the influences they've had, different areas and different immigrants have had on fashion enrichment and then also the influence that the West has had on other cultures. And we were also able to engage uh, with Otlum Polytechnic University and also with Dr. Tara Mayer out at UBC and they each had rich examples and I might add you know were um, from different parts of the world so it all works out it's all it, it's all part of who we are and it's what we do every day yeah um, so speaking of which um, how do you think the museum located at the Richmond Cultural Center play a role in shaping Canadian identity for newcomers or immigrants of few generations well, we try really hard to make all of our exhibits um, multicultural, cross-cultural, intercultural, where it shows how we all kind of are separate, which is the multicultural, and we're all getting along together, but we're all kind of doing our own thing. And then the cross-cultural, where there are all these influences that I just described for Interwoven World, for example. And then the intercultural, which was also, you know, how we then influence each other and we ex learn and experience um, aspects of other cultures and we're trying to engage with all three with everything we do and you know it, it is truly what Richmond is and as I said we're a community museum so we seek to reflect our community and also provide some thought and and that is you know part of being a civil society is getting along and learning about others and and discovering what we have to share and also thinking about how we can perhaps um, do better in the future sometimes. Well, well thank you so much today oh, you're for welcome. Um, sharing your experience with us and we'll see Sheila again in the next episode. Thank you. So here we're inside the Richmond Museum which is located inside the Richmond Cultural Center and right now they have an exhibition on called Open for Business where they feature um, Richmond local businesses through the century. Um, so it's a really good chance to learn about its local history through what people are doing to make a living through the past century. Um, so yeah, it will be on for a while. Come check it out.